City Radio 6 Music. So today, the 14th of September 2017, will go down as the day that the Dyson Institute of Technology and Engineering opened its doors for the first time to bright young things and hopefully their brilliant minds. And this is all because of Sir James Dyson. Good morning, Sir James. Hello. How big a deal is this for you today? Well, we're, we're really excited. I mean, we've got, as we say, these 33 really exciting, uh, brilliant inventors joining us. And uh, I, I hope it'll be exciting for them because we've got a very, very young engineering workforce here. Uh, we're developing new technology and developing products that we sell all over the world. So they're joining an organization that, um, that has engineers in, in the Philippines, Malaysia, China and Singapore. Where, and they, they'll be able to travel there as well. Um, but more than that, um, they'll be working on new technology and developing exciting new products. So, and we're thrilled because uh, it's great to have bright young people coming in. It keeps us young. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, mentoring them and uh, watching them grow and get their degrees. And I suppose it keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? Very much so. It certainly keeps me on my toes. <laughs> Uh, now, the initial plan was to have 25 students, but there were over 850 applicants. Now, I think that sounds quite low. I thought there would be like eight and a half million applicants. So is it a, well, very, is it a very rigorous sort of pre-selection process? Yeah, very rigorous. Um, we, we invited 100 people to, to spend a day with us, and uh, their parents came as well. So we put them through a pretty rigorous assessment, which I hope they enjoyed. Uh, and it gave a chance for the parents to see what their, their children would be doing and, and where they'd be living. And I, I think the parents were very enthusiastic at the end of it. Now, you're such an inspiration for so many people. You know, you're a massive hero of mine and a hero of so many people listening to the show because we've had so many questions that people want to ask you. Is that what, well, how did you, what did you set out wanting to be? Well, I, I was the son of two school teachers. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to be. Uh, I did Latin, Greek and ancient history at school and ended up at an art school uh, where I learned that you could design products. You could be an industrial designer, a product designer. And I suddenly realized that that's what I wanted to do. So I went to work for an engineering company to learn engineering. So I've become an engineer and a designer. But I had no idea as a, as a child. I lived in Norfolk and had never seen a business. I'd never seen a designer, I'd never even seen an architect. Uh, well, I'd scheme with school teachers. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I grew up like anybody else. So art meets science often ends in tears. Art meets science plus commerce almost always ends in tears. How come you've got it right? Uh, I don't think it does end, end in tears. I think what ends in tears is, is commerce on its own. But you, if, you, if you set out to, to do a different product, to do something which no one else has, which solves problems, then I think you have fantastic opportunities all over the world. So you look at things differently. So, so it would, is it fair to say that you take things that are already successful and help, have helped the world historically, and then you sort of give them a superpower? So I'm thinking about, first of all, your wheelbarrow, um, your, your, your wheelbarrow, you know, front wheel, your wheelbarrow ball, and then your vacuum cleaner, then the hand dryers, and then the hair dryer. Is that f a fair thing to say? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the, uh, the hand dryer hadn't, hadn't been seen before. I mean, it was a, a very different type of hand dryer, very different type of vacuum cleaner. Yes, we tend to take things that have problems and solve the problem. Uh, but one day we might do, produce a product that you've never seen before. But uh, so far, it's, it's really solving problems that no one else has bothered to solve. And is it true that I didn't realise that your, your round front wheel on the wheelbarrow, or the only wheel on the wheelbarrow, um, was to stop it to, toppling from one side to another, but that was your brother's idea? No, 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 it wasn't my brother's idea. It was to stop it sinking in soft, in soft ground. All right, OK. Uh, my brother's very nice, but he's never given me an idea. All right, well, you need to change... <laughs> OK, you need to change something on that well-known website because that's what they're saying. Anyway, uh, right, OK. I oh, don't so, believe what they say no, on I Wikipedia. Don't, don't believe what they say anywhere. <laughs> uh, right, uh, unless you're the person who's about is saying it themselves. Right, Kelly uh, says, uh, can you please ask James, when he goes into a hardware shop, what is his favourite shelf or section? Ah, well, they, the hardware shops hardly exist anymore, unfortunately. But um, I, I used to love the, the string and rope section. <laughs> OK, good. Excellent. Good answer. And uh, now that James is one of um, our biggest farmers, is he looking towards uh, the farming industry for uh, other inventions? And I think this is from a farmer, particularly anything that can stop the dust uh, sticking to the windscreen of my combine harvester. <laughs> I'm sure we can solve that problem, but um, I think farmers, uh, it's a very exciting time coming in farming because uh, 
you know, most farmers aren't making a profit. So we, we need to find a much more direct route for farmers to get their produce to consumers. At the moment, it goes through too many hands and the farmer is not getting a fair share of, his, of the work he puts in. OK, uh, another question here. Um, when you were struggling uh, with one invention after another and it wasn't quite working out, um, who kept you going through the darkest times and what, what did they say to you? Well, I, I really embrace failure. Uh, the thing is, you, you learn nothing by a success, but failure is exciting because something's gone wrong and you've had a real visceral experience. So um, I, I like it and you learn from it. I think it's really important in schools that we don't um, criticise people or tick them off when they get something wrong because they've learned something. If someone who get, always gets something right is not experiencing things and therefore not learning by experience and by failure. Do you remember back in the early days uh, when you did your first deal, signed your first contract or, refers you've, or received your first paycheck that put you back in the black and you could uh, heave a huge sigh of relief? That wasn't until I was about 48. Really? Um, uh, yes, I was hugely in debt until, un until then. And uh, no, it, it, it was a sigh of relief, although I'd sort of got used to having a huge overdraft. I, I missed it in a curious way. <laughs> Uh, but I, anyway, I'm very pleased that I don't have one any longer and I don't have to borrow it. Okay. And I, don't have to, I, I was a very bad borrower. Right. Uh, you can get used to it, can't you? That's the danger, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, you remind me in many ways of Walt Disney, because Walt Disney was a creative that then become hu that became hugely commercially successful, but, uh, but he was sort of looked after by, by his brother Roy. And Roy, Roy had all the meetings with the banks and, and Walt, in a way, had all the fun. Do you, ha do you have a Roy Disney lurking in the background somewhere? I know, I'm afraid I don't, but I have, uh, you know, 10,000 wonderful people working with me who are really, really creative and come up with brilliant ideas. And for me, that's much more important than having a money man around. All right. OK, uh, has the money ever come first with you and an idea or a decision or a negotiation? Uh, no, 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 never. I don't, I don't think about that. I just think about the idea and whether it would make people happy and pleased and solve problems. That's all I think about. And if I get that right, everything else follows. All right, so you say engineering followed art. OK, if you could, if you could put your success down to just art or science, which, who would come first? Which oh, one science. Would come? science. Science would come first. All science, right. but we need art as well. All right, and uh, one more question here. Um, is there, have, you ever, have, you, have, you, have you ever invented something via a dream when you, your subconscious is working hard at it while your unconscious has a rest? <laughs> I wish. I wish that happened. No, no, it, it, the, the idea is... The ideas don't really come, actually. They, what, what happens is you work on a problem and you stumble across a solution. You can never calculate it or sit at a desk and work out a solution. You have to build a prototype and watch it fail and then overcome the failure. And when you look back on it, it looks like an idea or quite a clever idea, but it wasn't really. It came about through hard work, experimentation and failure. So expect failure, embrace failure, welcome failure, plan failure. Exactly that. And, and, you know, don't worry about it. I and, mean, of course, one does worry, but it's par for the course. You have to build thousands of prototypes before you can make something work. And it's fun. It's exciting, actually, All building right. things and watching them fail. So today, James Dyson, you sound like the busiest man in the world to me. What, what is a typical Thursday for you? Or is there such a thing as a typical Thursday for James Dyson? Well, luckily, there isn't a typical day at all. They're all different. And that's what's exciting about being an engineer or inventor. It's, every day is different and usually filled with failure. And when the success <laughs> happens, it's great. But it's always different and you're always learning things. Well, good for you. You're 70 now. What did you do for your birthday, the big 7-0? The big 7-0? I had a big party with fireworks. Good for you. I like fireworks. Yeah, I, I, there's some very new fireworks coming along with interesting <laughs> colours. You ought to try a few. I think they're coming from Spain. All right. And uh, we talked about Nikola Tesla earlier on. Um, apparently Hollywood's going to make a movie of Nikola Tesla because a lot of people don't know, don't realise how, how brilliant this guy was. And apparently um, in the early uh, 20th century he held 1,200 patents, which was a world record. How many do you currently hold? Oh, we've got more than 10,000. Oh, I said... We, we, we file more than 1,000 a year. I said 3,000 earlier on, 10,000, all right. And what <laughs> do you mean... Another, another Wikipedia. No, th no, this was me. This is me, Wikipedia, <laughs> oh, getting it wrong. <laughs> and uh, one more question. Um, um, uh, what are you most excited about that you're working on at the moment? If you can tell us about that. If you can't, it doesn't matter. Um, well, I, I, no, I can't really tell you about the product, but we're working on new battery technology. 
which right. will, I think, transform products. And uh, it's, that's really exciting and really difficult and big. I mean, it'll take a billion pound of investment, but it, 